Hi everybody, here we are again, and it's a Munton's Nut Brown Ale. Not here to talk about that. We're here to do my top five brewing equipment items. Not the essential ones. I'm assuming you've seen Jimbo's um, video on it. He started this one off. But things that I find are my go-to's, which aren't the essential items, but are, are good to have. So the first first item, item number one, not in any order, again, books. Well, that's the first book that I got. It's Homebrewed Stouts, sorry, Homebrewed Beers and Stouts by C.J.J. Berry. It was originally published in 1963. I started brewing in the 1980s, so it was 20 years old by then, and already into its fifth edition. So this is... So I must have got it after 1983, because this is fifth impression in 1983. A very good book extremely detailed and accurate in the actual brewing process and some of the historical bits of brewing and it also has a certain amount of basic recipes both well three three types all grain partial extracts and kit beers very useful book I've never found a book that's better, apart from maybe his first steps in winemaking. Again, when did this, when was this one? I, I got this one after because I started brewing beer. I can't see when it was first published. But again, this is the 8th edition reprinted in 1989 so I got it sometime after 1989 when I decided to start brewing wine so that's number one number two pot noodle tubs these come in different shapes and sizes you've got the standard tub you've got the king pot tub you've got the ones without a bottom in ones with bottom in. I find them very useful. Not only for brewing beer but other things as well if you just want to if you want a cup. Brian you got one with the bottom in. You've got a, a basic cup. But you can you, you can very good for putting hops or hot pellets into a hot spider. Because they're round. I tried using square tubs. Yeah, you can get lots in, but then you're tipping them in the hot spider and they're going everywhere. Why have you cut the bottom out? You may have noticed the ladies' lingerie filtration system. Basically, a pair of thick, heavy denier tights. Can't remember. The thicker the better. You cut the bottom out of the pot noodle tub, you can push the tights on. Especially good for wine making. Um, something like elderberry, where you've got a lot of berries and you want to drain them over quite a long period of time. You push up the tights all the way on and then pour your berries, your crushed and partially boiled berries in and gradually extend it. It means that you can get stuff into the the bottom quite easy and you can end up with it all in as tight a space as possible. But yeah, so we'll stop waffling. Number two, pot, num pot noodle tubs. Number three, jugs. I love jugs. Big jugs. Very useful. Little jugs, just as useful. 
medium jugs. I love all sizes of jugs. Jugs are great. You've probably seen several of my videos where I use big jugs for cleaning out the um, malt from cans, but a yeast starter, all sorts of uses. So, number three, jugs. I love jugs. Number four, stainless steel stirring paddle. Not essential and I only purchased it a couple of years ago. I got a video where I, it wasn't, it, it was, it had not burrs, not sharp, sharpish edges. So I did a video on deburring it, just, just giving it a nice smooth edges. That also wasn't essential, but it stops you from scratching your uh, fermentation vessel. Is it essential? No. I started with basic spoons using uh, doing kit beers, just kitchen cutlery. I moved on to a longish spoon, again just a kitchen spoon. That was far better, less chance of burning yourself. I then moved on to a plastic spoon, a brewing spoon, about that length. That lasted for about six months before I snapped it. So I thought I'll splash out on a stainless steel paddle. And to be honest, I wish I'd done it earlier. So, number four, stainless steel paddle. Right, number five. I'm going to cheat a bit here. Measuring equipment. You don't really need to use any measuring equipment with brewing. You'll never be able to recreate your perfect brew if you ever make a perfect brew. If you've not got the measuring equipment and if you've not recorded it. So, measuring and recording. So, we've got different sizes of spoons, teaspoon, half teaspoon, uh, quarter teaspoon I think, and tablespoon, and thermometer, not essential, by quite a long way, and hydrometer, again, not essential, but if you like to know the strength of your beer, fairly essential. You can work it out, um, especially using kits. Kits come, they generally about, well it depends on the kit, but it says on the kit what you're likely to get. Not essential, because as well, it also depends, you may take a can take your, your initial gravity and your, your final gravity but it depends on your brewing uh, your fermentation process as well so there's lots of formulas out there how to calculate your alcohol content but unless some are easier than others there's one in the book but unless you uh, have strict controls over how much oxygen is getting in you'll never really know how much oxygen uh, how much alcohol you get and this is probably one of the best I well not the best sexiest items not really sexy is it well it is it's a work of art a glass trials jar I had several plastic ones in the past they're all right but that, I mean, you can say, yeah, but if you drop that, you're going to smash it. But it focuses your mind a little bit. Having something, a nice piece of equipment, delicate. I've never dropped it. Hence, I've still got it. So, that's my top five. Go check out um, 
several others. I think there's Abbey Homebrew, he's done the top five. The I'll list them below. Grimboring Brewer. Can't pronounce that. Grimsborium Grim Yeah. I'll stick a card up. He's done the top five. Um who else? I'm not sure if there's anyone else. No, I think there must be. I'll put links below anyway in the in the description. Right. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.